it's time to talk about intermolecular forces. Inter versus intramolecular, what does it mean? Well, we don't typically call them intramolecular forces. What we call them is bonds. It means the forces that hold a molecule together. And then intermolecular forces means the bonds that hold different molecules together. So intra is within the molecule, it's a bond and inter is between two molecules. So this molecule attracted to this molecule. So now we're gonna focus on intermolecular forces because we already learned about bonds, okay? So with strong intermolecular forces, molecules will have a high boiling point and a high melting point. With weak intermolecular forces, molecules will have a low melting point and a low boiling point. So you can see right here, if I'm given this data, which this is melting point and this is boiling point, when I look at these numbers, nitrogen's numbers are much lower. So what does that mean? Hydrogen fluoride has stronger intermolecular forces. So what factors make them stronger? What factors make them weaker? Well, one is state of matter. So in solids, we have the strongest intermolecular forces. There are forces holding those particles closer together, okay? Gases have the weakest intermolecular forces. Then we have the distance between particles. That's a little bit affected by solid, liquid, and gas as well. So some of these are a little loosey-goosey and overlap each other. So when there's a small distance, the intermolecular forces are greater, stronger. When there's a big distance, the intermolecular forces are weaker, which should make sense. You can hold something tighter if it's closer to you than if it's far away the number of bonds okay so single bonds double bonds and triple bonds would be intramolecular forces but if there are more intermolecular forces on the same molecule it's stronger mass well big particles with more mass have stronger intermolecular forces Tiny particles with less mass have weaker intermolecular forces. You can see on this graph that helium, which has a much lower mass than radium, has a much lower boiling point, okay? You can see that also here. As the molar mass increases, the melting point increases and the boiling point increases getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the intermolecular forces get stronger. In addition, the type of bonding, the type of intramolecular force affects the intermolecular force. What the heck do I mean? Let's see. So for example, in metallic bonding, in metallic bonding, the valence electrons are in a mobile C. So they're just kind of like free floating around those positive cations. And so the electrons are moving all around. These have very strong intermolecular forces. There's a lot of attraction between positives and negatives happening because those electrons are kind of moving around in this mobile C. So metallic results in very strong intermolecular forces. Now ionic bonds also have very strong, that's not as strong as metallic, but still very strong intermolecular forces. And why? Because again, we have that attraction between positives and negatives. So you have a negative anion attracted to a positive cation, and that bond is ionic. But now this positive is attracted over to this negative in another molecule. That makes another attraction between positive and negative. That's the intermolecular force, okay? So the intra is the bond, but then the inter is the attraction. So if we look at a molecule, 
This is a, a crystal lattice structure of an ionic compound, this one being sodium chloride. You can see that we have sodium attracted to chlorine, but then it's also attracted to this chlorine and this chlorine, and there would be one here, right? So it is not just attracted to one, it is attracted to many because sodium would be attracted to all of the negatives that are near it strong intermolecular forces, which is why ionic compounds, salts, are solids for the most part, because their strong intermolecular forces don't let them be anything else. All right, now covalent has the weakest intermolecular forces. Okay, so we have metallic, then ionic, then covalent. Now in covalent, there are multiple types of intermolecular forces, so let's look at those. So a lot of times the intermolecular forces in covalent compounds are called van der Waals, okay? And there are three types, London dispersion, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding. Now, most of the time, you don't have to remember the name of any of them except for hydrogen bonding, but you should be familiar with those words because they could be used, okay? So London dispersion, these are super weak. They're in all covalent compounds. But in nonpolar compounds, these are the only ones that are there. So that means nonpolar stuff has just got this really weak one. Now, what happens is that the molecules will temporarily kind of shift so that there's a, a positive end and a negative end temporarily, and then it reshifts. Okay, so that shifting results in some temporary attractions that just kind of continuously are in flux. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so we have these temporary forces that occur because of the attraction. You can see they're constantly in flux and moving. So as a result, these are pretty weak, okay? Then we have dipole-dipole. Now, compared to London dispersion, these are strong. Compared to ionic, not so much, but we're just talking within covalent. Now, these are only found in polar covalent. What does it result from? The partial negative from one molecule being attracted to the partial positive from another molecule. So dipole, dipole, okay? Let's see what that looks like. So when we have two that are near each other, there's gonna be attraction between those partial positives and those partial negatives, okay? And not just one, any of the partial positives near a partial negative will be attracted, but they're strong, not strong like ionic, but strong. Now there's also dipole ion forces. Now this occurs when you dissolve an ionic compound in water and the water pulls apart, dissolves the ionic substance, and then there are attractive forces between the water molecules and the ions. So it kind of looks like this. So the partial negatives of the water are attracted to the positive ions, and then the partial positives of the water are attracted to the negative ions, okay? But it results in a dipole ion force. Okay, hydrogen bonding. It is the strongest intermolecular, well, strongest covalent intermolecular. Not overall, it's still weaker than ionic and still weaker than metallic, but it is the strongest covalent intermolecular force. It's only found in something that is polar, but it's even more specific. It is hydrogen bonding, right? So it is when hydrogen bonds with either oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, period. That's it. Hydrogen with oxygen, hydrogen with nitrogen, and hydrogen with fluorine. So what happens is the hydrogen in one molecule is really strongly attracted with a hydrogen bond to the fluorine in another molecule, okay? Or the hydrogen in one molecule is strongly attracted with a hydrogen bond to the nitrogen in another molecule. Or when we're talking about water, it's the hydrogen in one water molecule attracted to the oxygen in another molecule forming a hydrogen bond. In fact, hydrogen bonding gives water some unique properties that raises, elevates its melting point and boiling point higher than we expect based on other factors. Let me show you what I mean. So here you can look, here's hydrogen with uh, elements in certain groups, 
okay? And you can see that when hydrogen is bonded with oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen, its melting point, our boiling point in this graph, is elevated way higher than we expect. We would expect it to be based on this red line, like over here, right? The blue line over here, this green line over here, not way, way, way up here. Why is it up there? Because of hydrogen bonding. Okay, so hydrogen bonding like this, it is between oxygen in one molecule and a hydrogen in a different molecule. So remember, intermolecular forces are not bonds that hold a molecule together, like with a chemical formula, those elements in the chemical formula, but it holds one molecule to another molecule, all right? All right, so let's try to summarize it a little bit. This graph may help. Again, you can uh, peruse this later as well. So this just kind of helps you organize it. So are there ions? If there are, okay. Are there also polar molecules present? If yes, then it's that dipole ion force, like it's aqueous solution. If there are not both, then it's ionic bonding, right? Are there no ions? Okay, well, are there anything polar? No. Okay, London forces only, the dispersion forces. Are polar molecules involved? Yes. Well, is it hydrogen with nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine? Yes, it's hydrogen bonding. If no, it's dipole, dipole, okay? And again, we call these van der Waals forces because they're covalent, right? Now, again, above here, even stronger would be metallic, right? But we just aren't including it in this graph. So this can help you kind of organize the information, but that's intermolecular forces.